Salvete Spectatores, it's Mazepust and it's D-Day, June the 6th, alas, 2016 and Hearts of Iron 4 has released. Finally, I've waited what seems like an eternity for this game. And what made matters worse is that I'm not a big YouTuber so I wasn't able to get the game on a press release a few days earlier. We will dive right in on January 1st, 1936, at the start of the Gathering Storm. And dark times are coming indeed. So, we can play of course as every country on the world that existed there. Ex I don't think... The very small ones, like Vatican City or Liechtenstein, were not available. Are not available, but they do. They're so small they don't exist on the map. That's that's okay. I think the smallest country is Luxembourg. That is in the game, and it's only one province, one tiny, tiny little province. But the big ones, the big countries, that is the big eight. Poland is also fleshed out. The big eight are very, very detailed. They have their unique. Focus trees, their unique leaders, their unique portraits, their unique, unique tanks, airplanes and stuff. So we'll pick one of them. I thought quite some time about what country I'm gonna pick and it will definitely be Axis. So we have to, we have to choose between Japan, German Reich and Italy. And because Italy is... Um, it's also the country we can start the tutorial with. It makes the most sense to me. It's not as bad as Germany if, from a fascist standpoint, if that helps anybody <laughs> in their pick. We will play on veteran difficulty because I'm a little bit afraid that the AI is too weak on a strategic level to keep up with the player. And what this does is it just hampers our production efficiency, our research time and political power gain. So we are basically forced to work harder to min-max a little bit more to achieve the same goals as the other countries. It, it does not affect core mechanics, like for instance to complete the Foki all after 70 days, it's still possible. What it does, for instance, the political power gain uh, Handicap only allows us to recruit and change you know, recruit leaders to our country and change For instance manpower laws or trade laws later in the game, so we have to do more forward planning Production efficiency cap is not a big deal. I think it's only it only affects output But if we fight well and fight min maxi We'll be fine Research time sucks, but we will will be able to do it Iron Man, of course, on. Historical AI focuses for the first couple of games, of course, on. We'll see how it goes and maybe change that later. I don't think we can... Ah, here's an options window. Oh, it's just the normal options. Okay. So let's let's dive right in for the first time, guys. Uh, local, that's alright. We'll call this... Imperium Romanum. Ah! Imperial Italy. Sweet. Dom. Oh man, I don't know where to begin. Okay. It's always easy to just work off all the alerts up here. We have an alert that says says research slot available. Um Okay, here it says limited exports, so our trade law allows us a minus 1% research bonus, but because we play on veteran, it's actually plus 9%. Uh, where was it? Traded goods. Ah, here it says, okay, limited exports. Research time minus 1%, excellent. So this is basically our normal interview, interview uh, where in CK2 the portrait of your, your current character would be. 
and then EU4 the flag of your country, like here. Okay, let's pick four researches. I've, I've never played the game before, but I've watched several videos. <laughs> Not to say a big amount. So one research slot should always be occupied by land doctrine. It's just too good to miss out. They're not OP, but they're very strong, the single bonuses we get. There are four doctrines that all countries share, and you can only pick one of them. And you, then you can go down the line, and there are branching paths and so forth. We have mobile warfare, warfare for Germany, superior firepower for Japan and US, the mass assault for the Soviet Union, and grand battle plan for Great Britain, France, apparently maybe Poland, and definitely Italy. The first one is already researched, trench warfare. It gives us a max entrenchment plus 10, so if we are on the defensive, we can profit from that. And entrenchment speed plus 25, so this is a very defensive heavy focus. Then we have the grand battle plan, it gives us 30% maximum planning. So let's start with that. Extensive planning and preparation before engaging in battle is the key to success. Alright. The other three texts are, at least at the beginning, nearly always the same with all the streamers and YouTubers, that is... Basic machine tools. A plus 5% production efficiency cap. So our factories will produce better. And we need that because we have the 20% malus because of veteran difficulty. A variety of newly developed milling machines can be used in military production, from the small and versatile types available to any machine shop to the large scale advanced models that push the technological limits. Okay. And you can see they take different amounts of time. So machine tools is easier to research than grand battle and the doctrines. They take, wow, nearly a year for the first grant. Holy crap. Okay. Um, the second one will go to construction. Here you can see 1936, basically up to here. Everything is allowed within the first year, and allowed means with, without penalties, researchable. Construction gives us a construction speed of 10% to everything that is construction related. We'll come to that later. Improved methods and materials allow us to construct buildings, civilian and military, faster. Okay. And the fourth one, I think, is located under engineering. And it is electronic mechanical engineering. Research time minus 2%. So, flat out bonus. To research bony that give us reduced research time is always the best and first thing you should do. We live in an age where electrical machines can no longer only warm and light us, but help us think and communicate. Electronics will be key to military intelligence in the coming century. Is that so? Well, <laughs> in hindsight we can say yes. And apropos hindsight, hindsight is a big problem and we'll see from a development standpoint and we'll see how the game developers managed hindsight. So, we are at war with Ethiopia. We will come to that later, that's a big problem, or big situation, I should say. Oh my god, let me just for one second... ...decrease the scroll speed. Zooming can even be increased. That works. Okay. So, we are at war with Ethiopia. They have 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 divisions visible. Let's have a look at our intelligence. They say they have between 9 and 16 divisions. So, that seems plausible. That it's only these 12 that they don't have anything in the inland. Two military factories, two civilian factories. Well, convoys don't really matter because this is an inland country and really nothing else going on. Hail Selassie, a great, great leader, leads the country and we are about to kill them and take Addis Ababa for ourselves. 
but we'll come to that later. So we have three civilian factories. Civilian factories is our currency for trading as well as a means to production, uh, construction, I'm sorry. And same logic applies with resources. Uh, research. We research research time modifiers and we will produce production of facilities that help us produce better and faster. So we'll build civilian factories with civilian factories. We could also build naval dockyards and military factories as of now. The rest is locked. Could also improve infrastructure, which is okay on the mainland and I believe very bad in the desert, in Libya. And here in Italian East Africa. So infrastructure, anti-air and air bases are produced on a state. These guys are produced also in states. And these naval bases, land forts and coastal forts are produced within a single province. So we want to build civilian factories. I do not want to max out, so let's have a look. So blue means we can't build any, anything anymore there. Sara is too small. I believe also Dodecan is, yes. Hmm, we could build in Tripoli, I'm sorry. Could also build in Africa. Um, I wonder where we are safest from bombers. Because we will be at war with France and Great Britain eventually, and Great Britain is also very, very present in the Mediterranean. So I think we will just build randomly in the provinces where there are the least amount of factories already constructed. And if possible inland, because when we eventually want to build more dockyards, we can of course only build them on coastal states. Not in southern Tyrol and Lombardy. So we'll have queued up these five for now. Um, they will build after... So I have 12 factories available and they will build first the one in Sardinia and then the other ones I can change. Oops, nope. Oh, here I can change the, the focus, which one will be built first. So let's delete the one in Emilia Romana, because I actually want to... This doesn't really matter. I want to build a lot of refineries in this province, so I have a quick overview if I look at resource map mode, which is... Here. Here you can see resources are gathered that I want to build all my refineries in this province. It is quite central and protected and all the oil and rubber that we produce from refineries will be put out here. Free military factories. All right, it's the next, uh, next alert. Let's have a look. This is all our production. We have a lot of Navy stuff going on. Now, a lot of these are all of these, in fact, are already under construction, so deleting them would be bad, but I can reduce the amount of production, of future production to a minimum. And if this one gets finished, it will just shift to the next one with our maxed out naval production. Do I want to finish one first? It doesn't really matter. If we pimp out the Kayod... Actually, um... Let's get the battleship started last. Shift click to move it to the lowest priority. Wait. Okay, we'll we'll finish this one first. Oh, okay, one. And then reshuffle. Just like this. So we miss oil, but that's alright. This will f ooh, none here, that's bad. So we have to do all that again. One over here, and then fill it up. So our U-boat will be produced last. These 11 months is not correct, because... Uh, now let's get these one down. So these big guys, the Battleship 2, the Cayo Duilio class, will be produced last. Because they probably take 
the most amount of time and these pump these three out as soon as possible in three weeks that's nice light cruiser destroyer and submarine what of which one of these models is good and which is bad for what we want to do we'll find out eventually so our land factories need assignment okay our production efficiency cap is 30 percent because of our veteran difficulty and lack of resources modifies the efficiency gain speed as well. We do not have rubber and oil, that's okay. Let's have a look at our trade interface, where we can see at a glance what we need, for instance oil and rubber, and where we have a surplus at. We have very little surplus of chromium and tungsten and 33 units, I shall say, surplus in steel and Aluminum. So this is the American pronunciation. Aluminium is the European, I guess. I'm gonna say aluminium because I don't like the sound of aluminium, I'm sorry. Um, so building fighters and infantry stuff is probably reasonable because I don't want, do not want to trade my factories. So let's... Hmm. Where can we see? Not production, not here. Ah, logistics, right. Okay, here we can see the, the balance, what it gets produced. And here we can see, okay, convoys. We have 195 convoys currently not producing anything because of the, the battleships in queue. We don't have any, any building set up, so there is no demand over here. Diplomacy trade, no. Construction, production. We could also only, for instance, look at a diff, uh, specific things, but we don't produce produce much at the moment, so this la this list is is good enough. What do we need? We need infantry. I like at least infantry units. Uh, divisions is are very strong, and tanks. So we do not have oil at the moment. Here we can see reinforcement is not fulfilled and upgrades also not fully, so even if we don't recruit anything at the moment, we still have to fill up our already existing units to a certain standard, which we can see here. Oh my god, our Divisione di Fanteria is not looking good. We only have six battalions or two brigades with three battalions each in our division and this is a, quite a small division so here you can see one one division on a field does not mean always one is the same one can be hugely different for instance our colonial divisions divisione coloniale in africa is even worse i would imagine huh it's actually the same except the the engineering company and what this one does is, it just adds... Oh, interesting, okay. Uh, for entrenchment, attack, defense on rough terrain, for instance, rivers and stuff, bonuses. So I don't know why any company, uh, any division shouldn't have engineers. We want to apply them everywhere, but we need army experience for that, so we can't do it now. We only have normal divisions, we have Divisione Alpina, which has also support artillery. Interesting. And also six divisions of Mountaineers. They are somewhat stronger in Alpine combat, of course, than normal infantry, but basically the same. They need artillery because of that. Infantry 850, support 30. Okay, they need more infantry equipment. That's basically the difference. 6, 3 and 120. I believe it's only the infantry equipment difference, so if you have lots of infantry equipment you should basically always build Divisione Alpina, in our case. We have this divi division of colonial troops. This means they have lower reinforcement... Nope, not that. Reinforcement chance. Okay, here we can change that. Our Divisione Celere, which, which means fast division which consists of four cavalry battalions, 
two motorized and only one light tank, <laughs> but proudly bearing the, the tank symbol here. This has high priority because there are strong units and we'll use them. That's alright. And we have Ragrupamento Celere. I don't know what that means. Ragrupamento. I don't know. It's basically only four cavalry divisions. Very weak. We won't build any of these. So we want to build Divisione di Fanteria. No location set in our capital in Latium. One order with the okay. Let's build. No, wait a second. So here we can build simultaneously. No, that's not right, is it? I want to add more of these. Add unit. <laughs> here it is. Let's have a look. Okay, we do not have any infantry equipment and any... So we need infantry and support equipment. This is good. Because infantry and support only costs... Aluminium and steel. So let's pump out all our infantry. And then support equipment. I don't want to produce tanks, motorized or close air support yet. Because we don't have the resources. Okay, we'll build. Uh, you know what? Let's reduce it to two lines. And this one here. And then... Okay, that's alright. I don't know if this is maybe too much. I really don't know. But let's have a look at how much this gets decreased. Can we see it? It only says continue at reduced speed. Okay, lack of resources, minus 45%. And here minus 60% because I lack 2. So lacking 2 is not as bad as lacking 1. Comparison-wise. Okay. Close air support, motorized light tank. I wonder if I should just scrap these. Or if I should continue producing them. Let's, let's keep them up for a while. No national focus set, all right. <laughs> Here we have our huge fascist Italy focus tree. We can all we can all do the ones that are green and not black. So for Triumph in Africa, we have, for instance, ha must have conquered Africa, uh, Ethiopia. We could do a light ship effort. Not interesting now. This gives us four naval dockyards. This gives us two military slots. And Ethiopian war logistics isn't good on its own because it only gets. Oh, never mind. It gives seven naval bases and five infrastructure. Ah, not that big, but the, f the way he down here is very good with the fifth research slot, which Italy is, I think, one of the countries that get it earliest. It's the fourth effort if you go right down here. So. We might have misjudged the logistics situation for our glorious conquest of Ethiopia. We must make it our primary goal to provide our brave troops with the necessary supplies. So we'll get that and it, it gets it gets cancelled if we lose Eritrea and Somaliland. Perfect. Airings with no mission and insufficient resources. We could trade for some oil, but I only have 12 available factories, which is so bad. We have 20 in, in all, but we have to trade away 8 for consumer goods. Ah, uh, not trade away, we have to reserve 8 of them for inland consumer goods demand. Which is... Said... Uh, nope, maybe here. Yeah, consumer good factory is 20%. But that's not 20%, is it? It's 40%. 8 of 20. I don't know. I don't question it. We just know we have 12. And we'll build more civilian factories. Air wings with no mission. Okay. I have no idea how the air warfare thing works. 
What I know is that we have reserves and stuff on wings that are located within... What's it called? Airfields? These symbols. So we'll scrap all these air wings. Is C still confirmed? Nope, it's enter, okay. So they get redeployed in our reserves. And if we delete everything... Ah, uh, got closed here. We can reset them... Uh oh, do I have a carrier, I wonder, so... Because carriers also carry planes, and I think they're also displayed over here. So, we have all in all 300 fighters, 72 bombers, and 336 support planes. I guess the evil bombers are part of that. Okay, here we can see we could unlock carriers. Empty carriers, rocket sites, okay. And this is the amount we could deploy there, at maximum. Yeah, okay. And if we have time, we should focus all our planes down here. We have one airfield here and one in Eritrea to the north. So we want to create a new air wing here. Move one. I wanna... A hundred here. Let's move half over there and half over there. Why can't I... Ooh, maybe this air wing, uh, this plane base is too far away to get there with our fighters. That's bad. Or, or can it only hold so much? No, no, okay, it's the maximum. So what, I, they don't have any planes. And I don't want to hurt the factories there, so we only will use close air support. And into war bomber, I guess these, these can do close air support as well. I want to see how big this, okay, 600, we can only send there. So why can't I send anyone else? Okay, they're deploying, and over here, we want to move all our close air support. Okay, apparently we... I don't know why, we'll see to that why we can't use these as well. And they, they need some time for redeployment. Five days, six days, okay. And then we'll set them as close air support here. What's the shortcut for the states? No, not states. Resistance, racers, diplomacy, factions. It's F1. Okay, that's what I want. Okay, this should be all for this episode. <laughs> I'm sorry that we didn't start the game. But in the next episode, we will have a look at our navy and start a war with Ethiopia. I thank you all for watching. And I will see you soon.